Bell Canada is as blue chip as they come, but are they a good investment? Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Bell Canada Enterprise, or BCE, is a favorite amongst investors hoping to get a foothold into the Canadian communication sector. They are the largest of the big three telecommunication companies with a market cap of full $10 billion more than TELUS and $13 billion more than Rogers. Last month, February 8th to be specific, they released their latest earnings report and there is a lot to digest for sure. We do need to ask, was it a good earnings report? Well, when it comes to earnings per share, the expectations for Bell was an EPS of 0.54. They exceeded that expectation by 3.7% and came in at 0.56. That looks great. However, when it comes to their reported revenue, it was expected to come in at 4.82 billion, but it fell short of that by 1.33% and came in at 4.76 billion. One slightly, almost silver lining to missing that estimate is that they were up 0.3% from the previous year. We will be digging into their fundamentals in just a bit to determine if they still are a good investment. Should you be buying BCE stock? How long will it take for their price to recover? You'll definitely want to stick around for the answers to those questions as well as a whole bunch more. Join today's conversation. Let me know in the comments if you hold any bell. Thank you for your participation. If you love this sort of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more and another huge thank you for that click. We talked a little bit about those estimates the news likes to dwell on, but we have more estimates that you may find interesting. In terms of mobile phone subscribers, they were estimated to end the period with 10,339,900. And they came in at 10,287,050. So they missed expectations by just over 52,000 mobile subscribers. Switching to their retail television subscribers, they were estimated to end the period with 2,732,050. And they missed that one by, well, not that much, 6,758. They finished with 2,725,292 television subscribers. Needless to say, investors were not super impressed with that earnings report. And as such, we did see the price drop from $52.01 to $50.51 in just the first hour of trading after the report released. It has dropped a wee bit more since then, of course. A bad or mixed earnings report does not make a company a bad investment. To figure that out, we are going to move beyond met or unmet expectations and dive into the fundamentals. To make the leap into numbers, we are going to once again call on the captain of fractions, the meister of division, the one and only Mr. Math. We will once again begin with the basics and take a gander at Bell's surface data. Their current value at the time of recording came in at $48.79. They've got a market cap of $44.74 billion and a very, very non-volatile beta of 0.47. Their earnings per share comes in at 2.28 and they've got a price to earnings ratio of 21.51. Now the average amongst their peers comes in at 24.60. Speaking of those pairs, we have Quebec or at 11. Four, Rogers at 37.3 and TELUS coming in at 41.0. We can see that that average got pulled down quite a bit by Quebecor, so it actually makes it look a lot better for Bell if you if you take that into consideration. Quebecor, they could potentially be a thorn in the side of the big three if they realize that potential of being, well, Canada's fourth national carrier. But back to Bell, they've got a price to book ratio of 2.70. The average amongst those same pairs comes in at 2.0. Looking at their return on equity, that comes in at 10.81% and their return on assets come in at 4.96%. Those are both fine. Overall, the surface data is what you would expect from a blue chip company. To get the answers we are after though, we're, we're going to need to peel back more layers and we will move down to the next layer and take a look at their cash situation. Their current revenue comes in at $20.02 billion and they've got earnings of $2.99 billion. Now those earnings, they are projected to grow by 10.49% per year. Their profit margin comes in at 8.4%, another number I would like to see go up a little little bit. That free cash flow looking very healthy at 4.10 billion and with their operating cash flow they've got 8.52 billion. Let's take a look at their fair value. So as I said before their current value comes in at $48.79 using a discounted cash flow model. We get a fair value of $117.74. 
that puts them undervalued by a whopping 58.6%. When we look out at the analyst projection for the first year, one year from now, they're predicting that this share will be around $54.97. So that is an increase of 10.7%. The cash situation is not bad. I would love to see their profit margin a wee bit higher though for sure. Let's dive down another layer and take a look at their, well, let's look at their returns. They have a dividend yield of 8.178%. That's nice. It's a quarterly dividend of 99.8 cents per share. A very high yield for sure. And that alone may attract some of the passive income investors. Their payout ratio, it comes in on the high side at 169.74%. Normally, a high payout ratio like this is a cause for concern. However, Bell has stable cash flows and the regulatory nature and limited competition within their sector has created a, well, a rather sizable moat. In addition, Bell has been increasing this dividend consecutively for 15 years. So there is that dividend aristocrat pride on the line as well. So speaking of those increases, their five-year average dividend increase, that comes in at 4.41%. Let's take a look at their returns though. On the three-year, their price did fall from $56.95 five cents to forty nine dollars and fifteen cents so that is a return on investment of negative thirteen point seven zero percent add in those dividends though the dividends we know they're nice it does bring them back up into the positive a total return of five point seven one percent when we look at that one year their price did fall from sixty dollars all the way down to forty nine dollars and fifteen cents so that's a return on investment of negative eighteen point zero eight percent dividends don't save them total return of negative eleven point six three percent their year to date it's looking a little better, negative 5.84%. They did receive one dividend, so we do have a total return of negative 3.99%. The positive side of the returns is the nice dividend, but even that has not been enough to keep those, well, to keep those returns where we would like to see them. I suspect as we peel down to the last layer and take a look at their debt, the full picture should come much more into focus. They have a total debt of $36.18 billion, and their total equity, that comes in at $20.56 billion. So that does give them a debt to equity ratio of 176%. That is a high debt to equity ratio, and it's actually, it's about 16% higher than TELUS. Although Rogers, Rogers is 250% higher than Bell, thanks to that acquisition of Shaw Communications. This debt to equity ratio has been increasing as well. It was only 107.8% just five years ago. And that just goes to show they did have a pretty rough time with the bear market and rate hikes and all of that fun stuff in the economy. They do have some cash and cash equivalents. That comes in at $1.77 billion. When we look at their short term, they have assets of $7.90 billion and liabilities of $12.11 billion. You guys know I do not like seeing liabilities higher than assets. If we look at the long term, their assets come in at $64.04 billion and their liabilities $39.28 billion. A little bit better. Uh, there was a lot I was not crazy about in their debt situation, but there is some good. They have a very good cash flow, meaning they can afford this debt. It is well covered by their operating cash flow and the interest to service that debt is well covered by their EBIT. So earnings before interest and taxes. Okay, I think we have enough data to allow us to ask that big question. What is the final verdict? The communications sector has not been on my get excited list for some time. Unlike many sectors, Bell did not bottom out yet as their current price is at the bottom of their five year chart. In fact, the last time we saw prices this low was all the way back in 2014. When I said we did not bottom out yet, that is not saying we are not there. I think if we are not at the bottom, it is pretty darn close. We may be looking at more pain for the sector, but this is a sector that will recover. And when that happens, well, today in the next few months may, may well look like brilliant places to have entered in on this company. In fact, I will put my money where my mouth is, and you can expect to see this added in the next zero to 100K challenge video. With all that being said, I do expect solid growth once we move into the bull market, and with their dividends, this has the potential to be a very good total return stock. That nice looking yield will come down in recovery, but right now it is a very good looking income for the passive income folks. This is one of those stocks that could very well complement most portfolios. You have time for this one, as I don't see a lot of growth before the rate cuts, so this may be one to get your DCAing going on.
One thing I also want to address regarding Bell is the station closures and layoffs announced with their earnings call. They closed 45 radio stations and laid off 4,800 jobs. The savings from these actions will not be reflected in today's fundamentals and in fact could improve their numbers by as early as next quarter. If you are interested in Bell Canada, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. Let's continue that learning journey by checking out this video on the big six banks. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.